The story of Harold Hempstead would have ended 15 years ago in St. Pete. He admitted to dealing in stolen goods. And a judge known for tough sentences gave him 165 years. He said, you're a despicable human being, and I hope you die in prison. But Harold Hempstead wound up watching others die in prison, and he took notes and fired off letters and complaints that exposed a scandal that rocked the state prison system. The shower was almost directly over myself. He says in 2012, guards used that shower in a South Florida prison as a torture chamber, and that they would crank the water to a scalding 180 degrees. Inmates could avoid the water when they were placed in the shower by just staying as close to the door as possible, but it would still cause their feet to be burnt because of how quick the water was rising at full blast coming out. And Hempstead tells stories of corruption, torture, and murder that go far beyond that shower chamber. Uh, was definitely evil. He sent us a stack of letters and agreed to his first television interview on what he witnessed. At first, it was a two and six point conversions. And I really didn't know what those conversions meant. He says it meant the guards starved the inmates, particularly the mentally disabled, and scored it like a game. The three point conversion would be to three days for lunch and dinner. He says the sergeant compared it to a Nazi concentration camp. And when the inmate was brought in, he would just say, welcome to Auschwitz. He says they would often give out empty food trays to make it look as if they were feeding them. There's ways that you can use your bodies to cover the cameras um, to where the camera can't view whether or not you give them a tray. You can give air trays with nothing on it. And he claims they sometimes spike food with chemicals or laxatives to dehydrate them even more. Yeah, and that's why with uh, Oscar Davis and Daryl Richardson, to this day I still believe that they've, they died from something associated with starvation. Hempstead believes a number of inmates died from abuse, including a mentally disabled man from Tampa named Darren Rainey. He says he watched the guards walk Rainey up to the shower chamber. The water was turned on. Uh, we started to hear him yell. The whole wing heard him. He says they were punishing Rainey for defecating in his cell. It's hot. Get me out of here. It's hot. Get me out of here. And in the last probably 10 to 15, 20 minutes, he was yelling, I'm sorry, I can't take it no more. I won't do it again. He says they locked Rainey in the scalding shower for hours until his skin cooked off. At approximately 9.30, I heard him fall in the shower. And Hempstead, who is an orderly, says the guards told him to wash away the evidence. They told you to clean up the crime scene? Yeah, on, a, in, on inside the yellow tape. I mean, we still had a yellow tape, and on the, big, on the door it said, do not use per order Inspector General's office. After Hempstead spoke out, the state ordered reforms, and the U.S. Department of Justice launched an investigation. Well, pretty much forced me into protective management without me agreeing to it. Now, as part of a high-profile investigation, Hempstead is in protective management, meaning he spends most of his time sealed off from other inmates, and he claims guards have threatened him for blowing the whistle. It was never a statement, hey, we're going to kill you, hey, we're going to do this, but the implication was you do know things that happen in confinement. In all reality, there is no guarantee if he's going to be okay. His sister, Wendy Hempstead, fears he could be next. Their thing is, he's surrounded by 25 guards, and I'm like, oh, that's keeping him safe. 25 guards. I'd rather him be surrounded by 25 inmates. Meanwhile, no guards have been arrested for Rainey's death, and the state still won't say how Rainey died. I don't understand um, why they can't just fix this. 